Skylark Recordings Annual Sales Report 2010. These year ends indicate which catalog title was the year's best seller under the independent record label. While the unit sales are the best they have ever been, the following information may be somewhat shocking because it wasn't what we had anticipated or where we thought the strongest growth would come from. The number one seller for 2010 is Vanessa Marie's Last Goodbye, followed by Vanessa Marie's Finally. The music video House of Skylark comes in third with Gracia, the Amazing Grace house mixes coming in fourth, followed by the Japanese house track House of Skylark closing up the rear is Make Me Feel. The highest number of record sales comes from South Korea, followed second by the US. Sweden comes in third, followed by Brazil and Australia. It appears that the EU was not the strongest market for Skylark recordings as in previous years. Asia dwarfs all international sales, which is due in part to the declining economies in both the US and the EU. Asia's economy is expanding with rapid growth. These sales numbers are prime indications of this. Skylark Recording's strongest retail outlet is NeoWiz, a communications and media company based in Seoul, South Korea. MySpace comes in second, followed by Spotify and then Real Rhapsody. Sales generated by YouTube are growing, though these numbers are strictly limited to video broadcasts. iTunes comes in at a shocking fifth, just ahead of Napster and Zune. Vanessa Marie's Last Goodbye was Skylark Recording's bestseller for fiscal 2010. 727 downloads, mostly in South Korea. Vanessa Marie's Finally comes in second, with 543 units sold, primarily through domestic sales. The music video, House of the Sky, comes in third with 150 units sold and over 2,000 broadcasts slash streams. Garcia sold 53 units, House of Skylark sold 24 units, and Make Me Feel sold 22 units internationally. Simulation analysis is key quantitative assumptions and computations underlying a decision, estimate, or project. Change systematically to assess their effect on the final outcome, employed commonly in evaluation of the overall risk or in identification of critical factors. It attempts to predict alternative outcomes of the same course of action. In comparison, contingency analysis uses qualitative assumptions to paint different scenarios, also called what-if analysis. This what-if analysis, what my education is paying for, helps determine projected target rates of growth based upon the percentages of actual record sales accumulated since the company embraced the digital format business model. Across the top are actual unit sales of Skylark recordings. The percentage indicate the rate of growth experienced from the previous year. The negative percentage indicate what lawsuits and artist breach of contracts do to music sales. While Skylark is not as strong as it was in 2005, we are well on course to full recovery. The prospectus is based upon factual rates of growth and is outlined by the graph on the next slide. This projection is based upon the growth experienced by the last two fiscal years. Our target is an equalized average rate of 30% per year over the next five years. By 2015, Skylock Recordings aims to sell a base minimum of 5,000 units per year. Skylark Recordings 2010 sales increased 65% from 2009. 2010 witnessed the highest amount of unit sales in the publishing company's history. This has been achieved with absolutely zero expenditures extended into marketing. Skylark Recording has not executed a promotional campaign since 2008. All sales and growth the company has experienced has been generated via word of mouth. The statistics and growth rates are subjective and were developed utilizing the unit sales histories from 2005 forward. These numbers are the forecasted projections if the company doesn't release or publish another music title ever. Several titles are slated for release and in the mix. As a result of their indefinite release, these projections are subject to change. Thank you very much. I'm Theo Scudlark for Skylark Recordings.